This set of papers was interesting because it brought together some work that my co-author Vasant Dar had been doing in platforms and trust over the last several years with some work that I've been doing in analytics and fitting specific analytics and technologies to specific business problems. And what we decided to look at was how the advent of new technologies, automation and analytics, uh, broadly called fintech, would be affecting um, the finance industry in the coming years. And one of the things that we thought about was what is required uh, to make a financial transaction successful is similar in many ways to what's required to make um, any kind of transaction successful. So we first started by looking at what successful platforms have done in areas like retail and um, travel. And we noticed that uh, there are really three things that most successful platforms have. Uh, the first is that they are, have a very open access. Um, it is very easy for a potential client or a customer to engage in the platform, and it's very easy for partners to plug into that platform in various ways. The second thing is that there are a set of business processes designed around whatever the objective of the platform is, be it booking a, uh, an, air, uh, an airline reservation or um, buying a TV online. The third thing is a lot of that work uh, has been automated in various ways through various IT systems using operations research techniques for optimization, for example, or machine learning to make recommendations, or frankly, just routing and, and uh, fulfillment through traditional means that are automated in various ways. Um, the next thing we thought about was what would that look like in finance, and we saw some examples. You see robo-advisors, for example, where even uh, today there are some early examples of robo-advisors being able to take on some of the basic uh, work that humans used to do uh, with respect to providing um, individuals with uh, portfolio recommendations and optimization um, solutions and so on. Um, but there's still a long way to go. We see the same thing in peer-to-peer -peer lending where we can actually match uh, potential borrowers with potential clients who might, might not normally be able to put money to work but now can because they can meet through this particular venue. Um, our framework gives you a way to look at um, the current state of uh, legacy platforms, which typically are not complete, they don't have all three components, and to use that to understand where the threats to those uh, entities might come in various forms. One thing that we highlighted, though, was that in most financial transactions, uh, trust becomes a big issue. Uh, it's actually not a big issue because we think about it only when it's not there. It's so much a part of what we do that we don't consider it, but we do trust banks to give back our money when we ask, and we trust brokers to trade at the right price for us, and, and so on. And that trust is not easy to come by for, for new entrants. And so we expect to see uh, acquisitions and or partnerships between uh, new tech companies and perhaps legacy financial firms. And this sort of opens the door for a rather interesting idea. You know, um, a financial firm is probably not going to spend the kind of resources that IBM spent to develop Watson because the, the economies of scope and scale are not there for them. On the other hand, they'd like to benefit from that technology, so a partnership is a natural uh, way to think about it. And then, as you think about it, you say, well, maybe these financial companies will become uh, the enablers of the technology companies to become the new financial firms. And if that happened, you know, you might end up with a situation where uh, a new client is really indifferent to whether they're trading stock using Fidelity or buying stock the same way they buy a TV on Amazon.